Hello everybody and welcome to the only game in town, Lords of Vegas. A fantastic, fun, crazy economic game that is like the reason that no one should ever play Monopoly. Ever. So, as with all of our rules explanations, we're assuming that you've set up the game first. We've got it set up here for a three player game. Three players have got some lots in Las Vegas. They've got some money based on the lots they drew, all that good stuff. And now here's a thing. For the purpose of this example and teaching you the game, I'm just gonna bung a quick example casino over here. Say, hello example casino. And that's gonna help me explain how the game works. But obviously when you start playing Lords of Vegas, you will have no casinos on the board. So here we go. This is a game that uh, simulates about 30 years from when Las Vegas was a town full of nobodies into a ridiculous bustling hotbed of nobodies. So you begin the game by rolling a couple of dice. You all roll. Oh my God. Look, you got that? You got that on camera? I did. This is a game for the lucky, ladies and gentlemen. So you're all gonna roll dice and see who gets the highest. And, uh, and then that player will be the start player, then you'll begin. So, uh, and then you'll each go clockwise around the table, taking a turn as you do with lots of board games. So a turn in Lords of Vegas, which at the end of it, by the way, uh, the person who has advanced the most around this victory point track is the winner, begins with a player drawing a card. So it's my turn, I draw a card and oh, there's gonna be a casino on it. Now, if you look at that casino, um, it's gonna be one of the five different colors of the casinos, which do not correlate to your particular player colors. And in the case of this, it's Tivoli. So all gray casinos are going to pay out at the start of my turn. And look at that, we've actually got a gray casino on the board. Before we get to all the fun of this card causing some casinos to pay out, the very first thing that happens is you're gonna look at which lot is printed on this card. In this case, it's B2. And the player who drew the card, whose turn it is, gets this lot. And if there happens to be a casino there because someone's already built there, when you draw that lot, you actually take it over. You take that yellow three and you're gonna replace it with a green three. Serves them right for building on a lot that could have come up in the deck. Every player's turn begins with you drawing a card and seeing which casinos pay out. In the case of this, it's a gray casino, which means every player with a die in a casino, and again, don't worry, you'll start building casinos very quickly, um, we'll get an amount of millions of dollars equal to pips on the dice. So here, the yellow player will get one, two, three, four million dollars, and the purple player will get a million dollars. Nice and simple. Then what also happens when casinos pay out is that the boss of that casino, which is the player who has the die, the single die with the most pips. So in the case of this, we've got a one and a four. Four is highest. That means yellow is the boss of this connected casino because casinos are considered one casino if they share a border and are the same color, that boss will get as many points on the score track as there are tiles in the casino. So we've got a two tile casino, which means yellow, the boss goes from one to zero to one to two. Then the next thing that happens is everyone with a lot that they haven't built on yet receives a million dollars for each lot. So we've got two lots each, which you'll have at the start of the game as well. So everybody gets $2 million. You get $2 million. You get $2 million. You get $2 million, but no one gets any victory points for lots. So then the card you drew will head over into this array of cards that show which casino colors have come up. Because of course, the more cards that come up of a particular casino means there's less of that color's cards in the deck, which means it would make sense to, for example, build golden casinos because all those cards are still in the deck. So after you've drawn a card and given various players money and victory points, then you can do anything you want. So this is where you're gonna to refer to your personal player list of actions. And there is a number of things that you can do on your turn. You can do all of them in any order as many times as you want. I'm gonna walk you through these. And then as soon as I've done that, we'll be done with our entire rules explanation. This is, it's a little bitty, it can be a little confusing, but fundamentally it's still Quite a straightforward game. So the very first action that I'm gonna teach you about is building, which is incredibly simple and it explains how you get these darn casinos on the board in the first place. You can pick any lot that you own. For example, let's say C8 here, that's a nice lot. And you build on it for the cost that's printed right there. So I would pay one, two, seven, eight million dollars. I will pick a casino of any color. We mentioned that gold made sense, so let's do that. We're gonna put it there. And I'm gonna put one of my dice there with the same value of the die printed on that space. Nice and easy. 
Now, let's say I want more money and more victory points. Another action I can take is Sprawl. Sprawling means you pick any casino where you are the boss. And of course, I'm the only dude in this casino, so I'm the boss. And you can extend it in any of the four directions. So you don't have to own the lot, but you do have to pay double. So that says 12 million, it's actually gonna cost me $24 million for the privilege of taking that lot. And as we saw earlier, because that's a lot that hasn't come up in the deck yet, someone could accidentally take that over if they draw that card. Another important rule I'm gonna mention here, if another player owns a particular lot, you cannot sprawl in that direction. So in this case, I could sprawl this casino over here, 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 but not here or here, because players own those lots. The third action you can take is remodeling, and for the purposes of this example, I'm going to pop another gray casino right there. So remodeling sees you taking any casino where you are the boss and deciding that Egyptians are passe. We're gonna go for a sci-fi casino or cowboys are lame, let's go ancient Rome. You take the full casino and then you replace those tiles with any other tile at a cost of five million bucks per tile. Now let me show you why this is completely devious. Let's say it's Yellow's turn right here and he decides to remodel that white casino to a yellow one at a cost of five million dollars. You see what that just did? That just merged this casino with those two to create a three tile casino where yellow is the boss. Oh God. So whenever that casino pays out, um, it's gonna earn three points for yellow and green will get the money because you still get the pip values, but they won't get the victory points. Ooh, mean. Let's say green wants to do something about that. The fourth action I'm gonna tell you about is reorganize, which is where you take a casino where you have at least one dice and you are gonna pay a number of millions of dollars equal to however many pips there are on the dice, uh, and then you re-roll all of them. So let me show you exactly how this would work. If I'm green and I wanna see if I can take control of this casino, I would pay four, five, ten million dollars. Then we would pick up all the dice, we'd re-roll them, and oh God, that is the worst. <laughs> That's the actual worst possible result. So what I've done there, yellow is still somehow the boss, and now when this casino pays out, I'm only gonna get two million because I now only have two pips. But remember, if, you, if Lady Luck spits in your eye like that, you can do those actions as many times as you want in your turn. So I could just pay another six million dollars and have another bite of that apple. A very common situation where you're gonna wanna remodel. I've got this little cowboy casino with a one pip that's gonna pay a million dollars every time it pays out. By paying just a cheeky little $1 million, because there's only a pip value of one, I can reroll that and hopefully get something higher, massively increasing how much money that casino is going to get me. The very final action you can take is grambling. You can gramble at other players' casinos, which is, I mean, I'll be honest, the house does always win in real life and in this game. Uh, if you gamble at another player's casino, you're more likely to give them money. The house has odds of about 5.6%, which is the same as craps. If I really did want some extra money or I was just bored, I could say, okay, yellow here, take the house card. I'm gonna gamble in your casino. You pick a casino on the board and then the maximum bet you can stake is $5 million for every tile in that casino. So we'd pick a, like this, uh, this yellow casino. Let's say we go here, yellow's the boss of that. So we can do that. It's got three tiles. So I could bet $15 million, which I don't even have. Um, and then we would roll, uh, and as this card says, let me just turn it for the lovely little camera, you will get money if you roll two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, or 12 on two dice. And actually, you'll get double your bet if you roll a two or a 12. Let's see what happens. Uh, eight, no, so in this case, I would lose all my money to the yellow casino. Don't gamble, kids, it's a bad idea, but it is a lot of fun. There's reasons you would do that just for tactical purposes though. If you maybe need like just one more million of dollars to, to make a very important play, it's worth the risk, right? Probably. The very final thing I'm gonna tell you about is that, and this is important for all players to know, during that setup you did, you will have put the game over card somewhere about 75% of the way through the deck. When you draw this card, the game ends immediately. So, you know, make sure you've got all your accounts in order when that happens. Another thing I'm gonna tell you about this deck is that there are nine of each kind of casino, but there are also some cards that just read that the strip pays out. There are four of these, and when these happen, all the casinos that are adjacent to the strip pay out. So in this example we've got here, this gray one would pay out like all the tiles of the gray casino. So, so long as one tile of a casino is touching the strip, the entire thing pays out. So strip properties are a lot more valuable. 
And of course, when any casino pays out, it also gets you victory points. So any casino that's touching the strip is far more likely to pay out and get money and points for everybody concerned. And on the subject of points, let me just direct your attention down here on the score track. A ways into the game, you're all gonna be uh, getting points, you're yeah, living large, everything's great. But that two there, and as you can see, if we scan the camera upwards, it actually gets higher and then higher because here it becomes a three refers to the fact that to advance up the track, you need to score three points from a single casino. And here's the rub. Let's say, uh, let's say this was the situation and Green was the boss of a two-point casino and a yellow, yellow point casino, and Green was right here, and we drew a yellow card off the deck, so all these yellow casinos would pay out. In total, the Green player would score three points, two for being the boss of this casino and one for this one. But when you are pushing yourself up the score track, back down here, you have to apply all the smallest values first. So that one point casino would try and push green up and would make it, and then we'd score the two point casino, and that would make it all the way up there. The very final rule I'm gonna tell you about is an important uh, clause that is called re-roll when tied. So if we look down here at this example, let's say that the green player remodels that cool cowboy casino into a Egyptian casino. Now. Immediately what happens is we look to see who's the boss and actually both of these dice are tied. And whenever that happens, whenever the boss is two dice from two different players, let's say yellow had two fours there and green had a two, that wouldn't force a reroll. But when two different players have the same number, you're gonna reroll all the dice that are that same tied number. So in the case of this, we would actually reroll everything because it's all fours, which is the highest number. And then you just put them right back and all that's done is lower green's value of the casino. If you're looking for what's happening thematically when this happens, the manual isn't really clear, but I like to think that these dice basically represent like mobsters that you've got. So if you've got a six, you've basically got a murderer who will kill everybody. You know, like you, you, gotta, you give the game some credit. It, uh, it tells kind of an interesting story with these dice. And that's Lords of Vegas, an absolutely phenomenal economic game that is surprising and interesting and fun and satisfying because you're making so much money all the time with all kinds of opportunities for clever plays and deviousness. Oh, one final rule I've forgotten. Players can exchange stuff at any point. You can give players money, you can buy casinos, you can buy dice. So long as you actually don't change what is on the board, you can always change ownership. If I want that lot, I can pay you for it. If you want this casino, we can swap my one pip for a one pip of yours. It's all down to players. It's just a game that lets you have fun. You know, it lets you do almost whatever you want at any moment, but it's still so clever and so surprising. And we recommend it unquestionably. Thank you very much for watching everybody and good luck out there.